Good morning, folks. Today we're going to hit eye candy from space, pre-earthquake signals of three different varieties, the water is wet of space weather studies, and an update on the weakest point of Earth's magnetic field during this ongoing pole shift. But let's start with the last 24 hours on our star, where things are getting a bit more interesting. We still don't have scary flares or plasma eruptions, but the sunspot situation is surging, and the solar flares are beginning to wake back up again. You're going to see that right here, right side of the GOES X-ray flux, that the flares are starting to return here this morning after days of silence. The flaring is hitting those developing areas as you see the flare flashing here in 94 angstroms from SDO. The sunspots themselves look like this. Significant development over the last 36 hours. Here's how it got that way as we run the last 48. You can see their development and now we'll zoom in a bit on each region. North incoming is actually in a bit of decay. The southern group is gaining umbral cores and umbral size, major central development. And then this guy just came out of nowhere. That's why the X-ray flares are on the rise this morning and more is expected. Folks, yesterday we discussed the polar vortex setup for the next week, which will bring a major cold wave into the states and even far south into Texas, Georgia, maybe Florida. Wind chills are going to be fairly significant, so please have caution next week as you face this one. Up next, the eye candy. This is a new shot from both James Webb and ALMA. Fantastic use of multiple wavelengths to capture both starlight and interstellar dust and gas. Chandra's eye candy is up next. It's the center of the Milky Way, and it's a composite image using shots in radio waves, near infrared, far infrared, and then a bit of x rays sprinkled in as well. Their goal was the never ending chase to trace the traffic jam in the galactic core. Got a triple up next. Three pre earthquake anomalies papers. This one hits atmospheric electrons, but also gamma emission. Never heard that twist on this subject before. Alas, atmospheric electricity appears to remain the most popular signal. But work is also progressing in the magnetic anomaly sector. The Earth's magnetic field is much more easily measured than the total atmospheric vertical column of electrons, and it appears as vulnerable to pre shake modulation. Finally, a new and even weirder twist on the pre-earthquake electromagnetism. This team found the ground electrical resistivity begins to change before the quake. This makes sense, and I do hope the subspecialty gains some traction. Moving on to the bigger stories, they studied a red dwarf in its hosted exoplanet and found that it is likely too irradiated to house life. Their larger conclusion is that space weather, stellar flares, make many planets unsuitable for life as we know it despite the fact that our sun makes those killer flares only very rarely every few thousand years. That is a blessing, but it is only until you develop a society dependent on electrical technology that will be destroyed by even one of those rare events. Last but not least, we're at the South Atlantic Anomaly, the weak spot in Earth's magnetic field, the point away from which both magnetic poles are shifting. It has been expanding and moving slightly, and while the official 2025 World Magnetic Report is coming in a couple days, today we report an early release of the finding that it's still moving and expanding. Nothing has changed. The magnetic pole shift is still marching forward. Shout out to our documentary sponsor, GoldObservers.com, from Gold Co. Not only are they sponsoring the Magnetic Pole Shift documentary coming out later this year, they are observers, and they want all of us to join the class of serious preppers who includes precious metals in their stockpiles. They definitely deserve a thank you. GoldObservers.com And folks, here is the meat of the summer schedule for Observer Ranch. Yellow is the mini conference dates. Observer Meetup Day on January 21st. Dr. Pierre Marie Robitaille is joining Grand Opening Weekend. Full two to three day event there. And then Dr. Dunning, of course, coming for the Kings of Catastrophism on May 3rd and 4th. Come out and see us this year. ObserverRanch.com We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 5 30 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone